What's up, everyone? Welcome to the first episode of the TJP podcast. Uh, today's guest is a former TCU Hooper and currently playing for the Cairns Taipans in the Australian NBL. He's the silent star. It's Quat Noy. Uh oh. Noy's all alone by himself. Quat Noy with the end. Nice finish. That's space. Noy, good first quarter. That continues. Exactly what it looked like then from Scotty Hobson. Noy goes the other end. That man. How you going? Yo, yeah. What's up? What's up? What's up? Thanks for having me, bro. What have you been up to? Yeah, I'm gonna, uh, you know, just preseason training. Um, yeah. we just got back from Bamago with the team. You know, a little uh, getaway together. Um, That's dope. But it's good to be back in Cairns and good, good to you know start the week off strong. Um, for starting sure. Monday. For sure. So is that when your preseason starts? Yeah, yeah. We fly out to um Tasmania, um on Thursday. Oh yeah. What a blitz, yep. Um, so I've got a couple of questions for you. Um, just to start it off, um, so you attended TCU college? How right, was that? Right. Yeah, what was that yeah. like? No, no, TCU was great. Um, you know, I did three years over there um, under the coach, um, Jamie Dixon, mm-hmm. which was a great coach. Um, taught me so much about the game, taught me how to win. Um, plus, you know, we had... Um, uh, David Patrick, the assistant coach at the time, and Ryan Miller, the, another assistant coach. So it was good to be under their order, um, under their wing. Um, we had some talented players in TCU at the time. You know, Desmond Bain, who's playing for the Memphis Grizzlies at the moment. Mm-hmm. Um, Jalen Fisher, who's playing in the G League. Alex Robinson, who's playing in the G League also. But yeah, it's been a great three years there. Um, did great my first couple of years there. And, you know, now I'm in with the Cairns Titans, which is a blessing. Yeah, that's sick. Um, so I want to get into a bit after like college. Um, was it just like after college, you just wanted to go straight to Cairns or did you have any other offers or what was that like? Yeah, it was between, um, I had some couple of interests overseas, mm-hmm. um, the G League, I had some interest in the G League and I had some interest, interest in the NBL here too. Mm-hmm. So it was pretty much how to juggle my decisions, um, my choices with my agent and some close family members. So overall, you know, I felt like Kansas Titans was the best opportunity for me to expand my game. Um, it was away from distractions and it was the best place for me to, you know, to reach my full potential. For sure, for sure. Um, how is it in Kansas? you like it? Yeah, yeah, it's, it's, yeah. It's, it's a quiet place. Yeah, I love Kansas. Um, it's a beautiful place, small place, but you know, everything around here is close. Um, the gym is just around the corner, just like a five minute walk. Yeah. Uh, so I have, I basically have access to everything here. Um, it's perfect fit. Perfect. Um, so I saw that you, in 2019, you entered the NBA draft. Mm-hmm. Um, and then I, I was following it and it said like you dropped out of it or something. What happened there? What was, uh, if you, if you don't mind right after college? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, it was really for the experience, you know. I had um NBA workouts. I had about five NBA workouts. Um I really just went there for the experience, just to experience it all, get to meet the coaches, get to see the feedback on me. Mm-hmm. And you know, the feedback was, you know, they just want to see me play against um older people, older um athletes, pros, and that was that was another decision why I came to Australia to play in the NBA, which was one of the toughest leagues at the time. And yeah. still is one of the toughest leagues in the world. So I just wanted to see me, you know, play against the older guys. And my first year with the Cairns Tapas, you know, I did well. Um, I showed the NBA teams a lot. But unfortunately, I got injured towards the end of the season. Mm-hmm. And, you know, two years later, you know, I have another season just to show the NBA teams what I'm about. Yeah. yeah. That first season, man, you were, whew, that was a good season. <laughs> no, I appreciate that, bro. <laughs> Um, you got it. What's your what's your pregame? Do you have a pregame ritual? Yeah, I usually uh I take a nap about a two hour nap before yeah before game. So that's my ritual. Um, I love to least listen to a lot of Afro beats mm-hmm. for my pregame. I'm a big fan of Afro beats. You know, Burner Boy, Whiskey, Devito. Um, and I just eat thirty minutes before the game. Have a good meal in my in my stomach. My dad told me that ritual. 
Mm. Uh, you what know, you bring again with a lot of um, it. It depends, you know. I got a lot of um, vegetables, a lot of salad. Um, I try to get a banana in there and some pasta too. Nice, nice. Um, so growing up in Sudan, that's where you're from. Um, how was that? How did that um, kind of had that environment like make you the, like the man you are now? Yeah, it was tough, man. Um, I was obviously I was very young at the time. I was born in South Sudan. Uh, then I moved to Egypt um, when I was about two years old. I lived there for two years. Then the only I don't remember much. I was only three years old. I don't really yeah. remember much at, um, about the, um, the environment there. The only thing I remember just having the earthquake. It's an earthquake at the time. I remember being around my family members, um, trying to evacuate the building. Oh, and wow. that's my earliest members of South Sudan, really. And yeah. So I moved to Australia in 2002, straight to Newcastle. So I say that's where my basketball dreams and all my, you know, my competitiveness and my love for the game grew was all in Newcastle. Yeah. How was uh, playing in Newcastle? Yeah, it was good, you know, small city. Um, had to make a name for myself, which I did. For sure. Um, you know, going through the rep. Um, programs um had to make a net name for myself make the first division then as i got better more confidence in myself started get noticed from the state teams uh made the new south wales country state team um did very well in that and got some more opportunities to represent australia which i did in the 2014s and the 17s world championship uh, which was in dubai mm -hmm. did very good in that tournament um made it as far in the grand final lost by seven by the United States. And before you know it, I was in America playing high school at Mulberry Academy. I saw that, I saw that. How was, uh, how was going through the high school program there? Yeah, no, it was tough. It was tough for me to adjust the first couple of weeks, uh, first couple of months. Um, but, you know, with the help of the Ben Simmons family, the Simmons mm -hmm. family, um, you know, they helped me ease through that pretty uh, smoothly. Yeah. And, you know, Coach Boyle, Kevin Boyle, which was the head coach at the time, um, very tough coach, knows so much about the game also. And he helped me develop my game to where I am today, you know, just choosing little bits and bits to improve my game. For sure. And did two years there, graduated high school, and got an offer from a couple, about five teams, college teams. Um, had to juggle, you know, which was the best opportunity for me. And before you know it, I was at TCU. So um, I know when I first moved out here to – Arizona um when I was like learning how they play it over here compared to back in Australia how long did it take you to get used to the difference in the game uh I would say probably like two months oh yeah um yeah I was I was already you know a young talented player coming in but you know I had to get used to a lot of things like the weight room I never lifted before mm -hmm. um before I went to high school there uh this the speed of the game, you got you, you can relate with me too. The speed of the game is so much different than yeah. here in Australia. So I'll say them two things, you know, just building my body and just adjusting to the speed. So it took me about two months to adjust to that. And before you know it, I was developing, developing, and just finding a, a new person in myself. Yeah. Even mm. I um go to like some high school places and just the gyms they have here are like way better than back right. home. Yeah, like the, the programs here, like AAU program, high school program, mm -hmm. that matters. Basketball stadiums they have in the United States is nothing compared to Australia. Yeah. And I feel like Australia is still developing a little bit. Um, it's almost, it's not, I wouldn't say almost there, but it's on the right track to be there. Yeah. Um, there's a lot of talented Australian players coming out of Australia. And I can't wait to see what the next 10, 20 years of Australian athletes will be in basketball. For sure, for sure. Did you hear about the... Uh... NBO, um, NBO one with the Newcastle Falcons back. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Newcastle yeah. Falcons. So, uh, if hopefully if I'm still here, um, uh, okay, you know that's in the future. I can't really say much, but um, I would love to play for Newcastle one day. Hopefully they have an NBO team one day. In yeah. yeah. After my basketball career is done, for sure. Um, I would definitely love to come back to Newcastle and represent Newcastle. So speaking of your basketball career, um, got any plans on what's next after the season? Yeah, my, 
well, I, I believe this is the best, hopefully my best season coming in. Um, obviously, I've had injuries my two past seasons. So hopefully if I can stay healthy this season um, and a lot of opportunities will um, open up for me. But my main ob objective is to play in the NBA. That's my future. Um, mm -hmm. You know, whatever happens, happens. But um, that's my main goal right now. For sure. What's your, uh, what's the number one NBA team you want to play for? I've never, I've never even, you know, played in the G League or done summer league or nothing like that. So I can't really say. But any, of, any team that, you know, decides to pick me up, um, they'll be my favorite team. For sure, for sure. Um, speaking of injuries, I uh, read somewhere that you tore your PCL. Right, right, right. How yeah, I tore my PCL. How did that happen? Yeah, unfortunately, I slipped uh, against the Sydney Kings. Mm -hmm. There was a wet spot on the court. I slipped and tore my PCL, um, which was very unfortunate, but, you know, stuff that you can't control. Yeah. So thankfully, you know, I'm back, I'm healthy and just ready for another great year. For sure, for sure. Um, I know I've been through my uh, great deal of injuries um, and mm. it's taken a toll on my mind. How had yours take a toll on yours? Um, like I said before, you know, it's, you can't control them. The stuff that you can't, it's just uncontrollable. Um, but my mindset, you know, I have so much stuff that I want to, I want to achieve so I can't let an injury you know set me back um I gotta keep moving forward do what I have to do to get back on the court um strengthen whatever injury I had and just keep moving forward um a lot of people when they have injuries they you know they, they step back you know they think that's the end and I really believe that's not the end um you just have to get back from the injury keep moving forward because you know there's still opportunities out there for you so never quit and just come back from the injuries and you know prove people wrong that's my that's my idea on them Thanks, bro. I like that. I like that. Um, so looking at the NBA today, who are your uh, who are your top five in the league right now? You know, yeah, crazy because I was just watching the Golden State. The, I'm pretty sure they're still playing right now. But um, man, they look good. The ball, mm -hmm. man, the driving kicks. Um, you know, Steph Curry draws so much attention, Facts. and it just leaves so much other players open for opportunities. So the Golden State look pretty good right now. Um, mm -hmm. They're my early predictions right now. Hopefully, they make the playoffs. Hopefully, Clay Thompson comes back, but they're yeah. looking pretty good right now. I think uh, if Clay comes back healthy, they could uh, go to the finals again. Uh, that's my prediction. Right, right. Same. Um, so, you said before about uh, pregame, like music and stuff that you listen to. What um, what kind of beats do you, do you prefer? Uh, man, I'm a big music person, man. Um, I like the new Australian drill um, scene. Mm. They haven't they have right now. You know, the one for HP boys, um, the real juice gang from Melbourne. Mm -hmm. And, you know, um, Young and Lips, you know, I like I like the new drill scene they have in Australia right now. But other than that, you know, I love Afro beats. I'm a big fan of Afro beats. And that's between them two right now. They're my favorites. For sure. But yeah, what's your, what's your go-to song out of all of them? Um, there's actually a song by Burner Boy. It's called um, Hallelujah. Oh, yeah. And that's my, I, I listen to that song before every game. And I've done that since college. So that's my go to song before every game. So I might need to give it a listen. Yeah, yeah, suss it up. <laughs> um, so I want to talk a bit more about like the transition from college to the NBL. Um, what was it like going from college? like the trans transition back to Australia, mm. to the NBL? But, yeah, well, you know, I played in the Big 12, um, mm -hmm. which is the toughest conference um, in America, in my opinion. Um, so there was a lot of older guys, you know, very competitive, very um, strong athletes, um, and a lot of NBA prospects coming out of there. So my adjustment from the Big 12 to the NBL, you know, it's pretty uh, easy easy through it. I wouldn't say too easy, but it's pretty easy to ease through it. Um, I was already adjusted to um, competing against older guys, um, more stronger guys than I am. So coming to the NBL, you know, I still had that mindset of getting my body stronger, um, you know, because I'm going to go against um, players in my position who mm -hmm. already played in the NBA or have already had a name for themselves in the NBL. And for me, being a rookie coming in, 
um, two years ago. You know, I was just confident in myself, confident in my ability, and it showed on the court as many players and fans I've seen. Yeah. Um, speaking of NBA, um, well, NBA guys in the NBL, um, you had a couple of the point guard on your camp team. Um, Dang, what's, yeah, he um he had a little stint in the G League and I think a little bit in the NBA. How's it like playing with him? Yeah, so this is gonna be my third season with Scott Machado this upcoming season. Um he's looking very good right now, this preseason. Um he's worked very hard like all the other players on my team. Um but you know, having a, having him under my wing, um having actually me under his wing, um, you know, he told me a lot. And being there with Matuk Dane. My big brother, um, mm -hmm. Nate Jawai, and DJ Nubo and Cam Oliver. Um, my first year, you know, it's just a blessing. And they all told me a lot. And, and you know, it showed on the court my first year, you know. Uh, for sure, for sure. We made it all the way to the playoffs. Uh, it was a great year for the Cairns Titans, and hopefully we can do it again this year. For sure. Um, so, your third, going into your third year with Cairns, um, from the past two seasons, what's probably the biggest lesson you've learned? Um, you know, just, just, just be confident in yourself. That's my biggest thing. Um, you know, I've obviously had injuries. Um, and that doesn't, you know, that doesn't back me up or doesn't lose my confidence at all. Um, you know, last year, if I had a healthy season, I believe I would have won the most improved player. And this year, again, you know, I'm going to prove a lot of people wrong that I am the most improved player. Um, that I just keep coming back, keep coming forward, and I keep putting people on. For sure, bro. I'll be, I'll be cheering you on every step of the way. No, cheers, bro. <laughs> um, so I was watching a little interview thing you did for uh, TCU, mm -hmm. and you mentioned in there that you want to eventually go back to Sudan and build back a hospital and stuff over there. Right, right. right. Um, yeah. Yeah. What's what's the plans yeah. with that? Yeah, have you thought about it or anything? Yeah, well, um, you know, I'm always representing myself to these people every time I step on the court. Um, there's so much talent in Australia and all around the world, South Sudanese basketball players, and you know, for me to be a role model for all these young generations, um, you know, I can't let up. I gotta keep um, keep making a statement. You know, that South Sudanese are one of the most talented players in the world. Um, so. Hopefully one day I can go back to South Sudan, build a basketball court, uh, build a hospital, build schools and stuff like that. So that's my mission one day after basketball is done. That's it. So um, I definitely want to know this. Um, what's your current diet look like? Are you on any, are you on meal plan or anything? Yeah, uh, I, I, eat, I eat in the morning before practice. So I'll wake up around, you know, 7, um, make sure I get some food in me by 7.30. Um, I eat about three eggs, two toast. Um, so that really fuels me up heading into practice. Mm -hmm. Practice for about, you know, an hour or so. Um, get some VPI protein in me before I hit the weight room. Um, head to the weight room, get a good gym session in. Um, come back, eat lunch uh, around... So after lunch, I head home, take a nap for about an hour or two, then wake up again, hit the weight room again um, later in the evening for about 45 minutes, get a good um, workout in, then get another protein in me, um, then just chill around for a bit at my house, and eat some dinner, then fall asleep. That's about it. That's my routine. Nice, nice. What's the show you binging on Netflix? Are you binging anything? Um, I'm actually watching Witcher right now. Oh yeah. Um, yeah, on Netflix. Um, uh, and on Stan, I'm watching the Wu Tang Clan. Oh yeah. I'm caught up. Yeah, yeah, very good. Um, and I watch BMF. I'm still on that right now on Stan too. And I'm watching um Raising Canaan, and that just finished too. So all Fifty Cent um produced movies. I'm a mm -hmm. big Seth fan. I believe he's the best rapper of all time, in my opinion. And yeah, I'm just a big fan of him, and he's doing great things. Speaking of rappers, what? Who's your top five favorite rappers? 
Oh, top, top five, five of all time. Or, or just or rappers or just what? Just artists. Artists. Just go artists. Okay, I'm gonna go 50 Cent. Um, Bob Marley. Mm. Um, Craig David. Um, Craig David from you know England. Mm-hmm. Yeah, uh, he's played a big part in my life. Uh, his album Born to Do It. Uh, one of my favorite albums of all time. Um. I'm a big fan of Roddy Rich. Oh yeah, and, yep. yeah, Roddy Rich, and I gotta put, I gotta put Davido in there, another African artist, for sure. Nice, nice. Oh, all, all great. Yeah. So um, we'll do this as like a two part, two part question. Um, mm-hmm. in the world of like basketball, who is someone that you look up to and get a lot of motivation out of? Yeah, I would, I would definitely say Ben Simmons. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, we've been family friends since the Newcastle days, um, since we were young kids, man. Um, so seeing him, you know, make it to the NBA, accomplish all he's accomplished so far, you know, I just want to follow him in his footsteps. Uh, you know, I went to Mulberry Academy with him, uh, train with him every day. Um, so Ben Simmons is a role model to me, man. He's told me a lot. Um, the, Simmons fam- the Simmons family has told me so much throughout my basketball career. And hopefully moving forward too, you know. But um, Vince is definitely a role model to me. He's he's someone that you'd uh you'd like to play with in the NBA. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Um, and then who's someone just like outside of basketball that inspires you and you look up to? Yeah, that's a couple. Um, obviously my dad. Um, I tell him Um, my father. Uh, you know, he's told me so much since a young age. He's told me basketball. He introduced me to basketball back in 2005 in Newcastle in our backyard. So he's a role model to me, man. I look up to him. My older brother, you know, he's a role model to me. And my younger brother also, he's a role model to me. And yeah, man, just my family, man, is real close. Um, you know, they're very proud of me. They're very proud of my accomplishments. Mm-hmm. And you know, I'm happy they're on my side and they always support me no matter what. That's dope. So going into this um third season, what uh what are your goals for it? Yeah, just improving in all aspects of my game, um being more consistent, um, you know, get bigger and stronger, um, obviously. Um but yeah, you know, I'm already, you know, a very talented player. Um, I just gotta improve just a little bit um, in different parts of my game, but mm-hmm. offensively, defensively, um, shooting threes, attacking the rim, and I don't, I just have to make baby steps and you know, and help my team, you know, make it to the playoffs and hopefully win the championship this year. I like it. I like the confidence. That's all my questions I got for you. <laughs> yeah, that's perfect, all, bro. Um, yeah, where you, where you at right now? Are you where is that? Um, I'm in Arizona currently. Yeah. Um, yeah. rehabbing my ACL injury. Mm, how, um, how's that going? How, how, how far are you in there? It's going good. I'm about ooh, six months post op. No, no, mm. sorry, no, six, six weeks post op. Oh, okay, so it's pretty, <laughs> yeah. it's recent. Yeah, 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 um, yeah, yeah, yeah. So just rehabbing that and just. Yeah, getting back to it. Nah, that's good, bro. Sure. Yeah, keep it up, man. Um, yeah. yeah, it's obviously, it's, it's tough having injuries, you know, mm-hmm. uh, you know, from my own experiences. But, man, just do whatever you have to do to get back on the court. You know, injuries is not the end. So sure. do whatever you have to do to get back on the court. Definitely strengthen your legs. That's the most important thing. Even after you're back on the court and you're already, you know, feeling 100%, keep going. Keep um, strengthening your legs. Um, I think that's the most important thing. So before sure, you know, you'll sure. be on, back on the court, you know, feeling good. So, you know, bro. lessons to you, bro. Hopefully you're back on the court soon. I appreciate that. Um, anything else you'd like to say? Um, yeah, I just want to say, man, just stay tuned. You know, the Kansas Titans are coming this year. That's what I got to say. Man. Um, you know, obviously we had a bad season last year. Um, this year, you know, we're under the coach, Adam Ford who's our head coach this year, and a couple of new players who's playing a big part in, uh, in building this championship team. 
Mm-hmm. So to all the people that end up watching this, man, um, stay tuned. Can't stop us. I'm definitely coming for the team this year. And we're coming to win this championship. I love it. Everyone stay tuned. I love it, bro. Thanks for, uh, thanks for chatting with me. I appreciate no it. Doubt. Thanks for having me. Yep. Of course, of course. All right. All right. I'll see you later. See you, bro.